Hi, my name is Samuel Pignagura, and I'm an economist at the Western Hemisphere Department at the IMF. Thank you for joining this session of the Analytical Corner, where I'm going to present about how informality affects the effectiveness of containment policies in Latin America and labor market dynamics in the region. Latin America is a region that is close to my heart. I was born and raised in Ecuador, a country in South America. More precisely, I was born in Guayaquil, a town that is only a few hours away from some of the country's most beautiful beaches. And beaches play a central role growing up. My family and I had the tradition of going every summer to spend months or weeks at a time at the beach. These trips with the, to the beach started with the road trip to get there. And this road trip involved stopping by, pulling over the road, and buying some of the local treats that street vendors sold on our way to the beach. Once I got to the beach, I would spend hours at a time taking a swim at the ocean, and after that came the reward of getting a treat from one of the vendors that walked up and down the beach all day long. It could be an ice cream, it could be a coconut. Then, in the late 1990s, these family traditions were disrupted. Economic crisis hit Ecuador. One of the largest economic crises forced my father to close his business. And from then on, he had to rely on several activities without job security, without benefits, and without stability of income sources. How do these family experiences relate to the Latin American labor market, labor market more broadly? Well, they highlight the most important trait of Latin American labor markets, informality. In fact, if you compare Latin America to other countries in the world, you find that informality, that is, employees that do not have access to basic benefits such as social security, or that are outside of the enforcement and the control of the government, comprise a large share of employment. If you look at advanced economies, informal employment accounts for approximately 10% of total employment in the average country. In other emerging markets, you find that this number is closer to 50%. In Latin America, depending on which country you look at, this number can vary between 50 and 70%, so larger than the average emerging market. The second characteristic of informality in Latin America is that it provides a buffer against economic shocks. So many people like my father, when they face hard times, they turn to the informal sector to make ends meet and find additional sources of income. The COVID crisis, however, was different. This time around, we find in work that we did with colleagues at the IMF that informality did not play that buffering role. Moreover, employees that were in informal activities had a hard time performing their jobs. And this is because in our research, we find that informality has two characteristics that made these workers ex ante vulnerable to the COVID shock and containment and lockdown measures. The first characteristic is the fact that informal jobs rely on face-to-face -face interactions. They are what we call contact intensive. This means that in order to sell your good or service, you have to face your customer directly. You cannot do it from a distance. The second characteristic is teleworkability. The ability to work remotely is not necessarily available for informal workers. Why? Because they have to go to the place of work in order to deliver their goods and services to the customers. This means that informal workers, as opposed to workers like ourselves at the IMF, cannot work remotely during these difficult times. These two facts and the stringent containment measures that had to be imposed in Latin America explain why employment fell so sharply in the region during the second quarter of 2020. When we look at countries that have monthly and quarterly data in Latin America, which are basically the largest economies in the region, we find that employment fell sharply in these countries during the second quarter of the year, much sharply than in other countries in the world. 
In fact, if you look at these countries, these employment numbers show a reduction of between 10 and 20 percent. And the bulk of this decline in employment came from informal and self-employed workers. Those that I mentioned are precisely vulnerable to these lockdown measures. In these four countries for which we follow data at the monthly level, we find that between two thirds and three fourths of the decline in employment is explained by informal and self-employed workers. With colleagues, this sharp vulnerability and large declines in employment make us think, how do this relate to the fact that the region is facing one of the largest COVID outbreaks in the world? When containment measures were imposed, many people in the region stayed at home. But only a, a weeks after impos the imposition of containment measures, many people were out and about in the region. This was covered in international news media, and they were surprised by this fact. What we show in additional work we did with colleagues at the IMF is that this is not in fact a coincidence. This is related to these traits of Latin American labor markets. The fact that informality is so prevalent. We try to address empirically how this characteristic of Latin American countries relates to this effectiveness of containment measures. To do so, we applied econometric techniques to capture the effectiveness of containment policies in countries with varying degrees of informality. And what we found was quite telling. If you look at the response of new cases of COVID-19 in countries with high informality and low informality after the imposition of containment measures, you find that in low informality settings, containment measures do what they're supposed to do. They gradually bring down the number of cases compared to those countries with low informality that did not impose containment measures. In countries with high informality, the story is different. The evolution of the pandemic in countries that impose containment measures follows very similar patterns as those countries that did not impose containment measures. That is, containment measures are not as effective. Similar findings are seen in countries where government effectiveness is not high. Countries that are not able to enforce containment policies see a more gradual decline in cases compared to countries that have high enforcement ability compared to these other countries that did not impose lockdowns. What these findings show are the difficult trade-offs that countries in Latin America had to face. The challenges that governments in the region face were large. On the one hand, they faced a severe health emergency that called for swift and prompt and strong actions, such as the containment policies that governments enacted. They had weak health systems to begin with, and in order to prevent the rapid spread of the disease, they have to enforce these strict containment policies. However, these policies alone cannot do the trick. What we find is that if not properly accompanied by other measures that strengthen health systems, containment measures eventually lead to the gradual contagion of the population. The second point we show in our, in our research is that the fact that labor markets suffer so much in Latin America because of the high prevalence of informality means that containment measures need to be accompanied by compensation schemes that provide the right incentives for households to stay at home during lockdowns. Thank you. <laughs>